Okay, here it says the definition of the absolute and conditional convergence. So if you have a series, it is absolutely convergent when the absolute value of your series converges. And if the original and the original is conditionally convergent, if the original converges but the absolute value diverges, okay? So basically you want to take the absolute value, okay, and see if that series converges or diverges. If that series converges, then you automatically know that the original is absolutely convergent and you're done. However, if you do the absolute value um, series and it diverges, then you have to go back to the original and figure out whether the original also diverges or whether the original converges. And if the original converges, then you say that it's conditionally convergent because the absolute value had diverged at the beginning. Okay, so you got two, two things. One is if the absolute value converges, you're done, everything converges, you're all good, absolutely convergent. If your absolute value series diverges, then you have to still test the original to see whether or not you have a conditionally convergent series or whether you had a totally diverging series to begin with. Okay, so example four it says determine the series converges absolutely or conditionally or if it diverges altogether. And unfortunately, I didn't even write the problem here. So let me go pull up a problem. That way we can start this process. I apologize for the delay. Um, I guess when I prepared my notes, I didn't realize that I didn't have a problem there. So let me go grab one. Here we go. So this is the problem. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna take the absolute value of this series. So we want to look at this. Well, in that case, that means that the alternating sign part will just go away because no matter if this is positive or if it's negative, when I take absolute value of it, I'll always get a positive. And 5, an exponential, where the exponent is always positive, is going to also be a positive number. So I no longer have the absolute value of bars, and they're no longer needed. And this can actually be rewritten as 1 over 5 to the power n, since 1 to the n is equal to 1, no matter what n is. Um, and then this is actually just going to be a geometric series. So um, the absolute value of r in this case is the absolute value of 1 fifth, which is actually less than 1, which means that it diverges. And I'll even be more specific here as to what's diverging, right? It's this series that diverges, the absolute value, okay? That doesn't mean that the original series also diverges. I have to find that out, okay? So let's look at the original, and since it is an alternating um, series, I'm gonna use the alternating series test. So let's look at criteria number one. The limit as n goes to infinity of a n without the alternating part, which means just this. Well, as my exponent goes to infinity, this value goes to infinity, which means my whole fraction goes to zero. First criteria met. Second criteria, says that the a n, the nth term, has to be less than or greater than or equal to the a n plus one term. And if I cross multiply before, we get five n less than or equal to five n plus one, and we already know that that's the same as saying five n times five to the power one, five to the power n, and therefore it is greater. So by the alternating series test, that means this series, well, actually, yeah, this series, which is the whole series, um, converges. So if the absolute value of the series diverges, but this, the original converges, then what you say is that the original is conditionally convergent.
Now let's try another one so we can see more of that type of problem. So here we go. Let's look at the absolute value of this series. <coughs> Excuse me. And remember the absolute value is just going to make that alternating part go away. And because n is 1, 2, 3, 4, when I add 2 to it, it's always going to be a positive response. So I'm going to end up with this. Um, now, I don't know whether or not this series converges or diverges just based on what it looks like. Okay. Now, if I do the nth term test and I take the limit as n goes to infinity, this does go to 0. So it's possible it could converge, but I don't know that for sure. So I'll have to apply another test. I would like to apply the limit comparison test just because I like that one a little bit better than the direct comparison test. The direct comparison test requires me to know what is bigger, my original or the one I'm comparing it to, where the limit comparison test does not have that requirement. I don't need to know that, okay? So I'm gonna compare it to, to this series. I have a constant in my numerator, so I'm going to keep the constant, and I have n to the power 1 in my denominator. So then I'm going to do the limit comparison test. So that means I'm going to take the limit as n goes to infinity of my original divided by this one I'm comparing it to, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I get the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 2. And if I do the L'Hopital's rule, I will get 1 over 1, which the limit is just 1. Now this is um, a real number, a limit value. So the, um, what that tells me, remember what the limit comparison test tells me. What that tells me is that AN, my original, and BN, the one I'm comparing it to, both converge or both diverge, right? Now, I'm going to look at mine, which doesn't have that constant there. So if I look at mine, um, this is a p-series with p equal to 1. And we know that for p equal to 1, it diverges. which implies that mine also diverges. So what we've shown is that the absolute value um, series diverges. Okay. Now, I shouldn't box that because that just means that it's at not absolutely convergent. Okay. However, I still have to find out whether or not the original is conditionally convergent or if it is just completely divergent. Okay, So I have to go back to the original now. So I'm going to go back to the original and the original is an alternating series test. So I'm going to apply the alternating series test. So step one says take the part without the alternating part and find its limit. Now as n goes to infinity, this denominator goes to infinity, which makes the whole fraction go to zero, so the first criteria is met. The second criteria is that this term will be greater than or equal to the one next, the one after it, which means I'm going to plug in n plus 1 for n, which means I have 1 over n plus 3 less than or equal to 1 over n plus 2. If I cross multiply, I'm going to end up with n plus 2 is less than or equal to n plus 3. Now this is true, you can stop here, or if you're not sure, subtract 2 on both sides, and you get this statement, which we do know is true for all n. So the second criteria is met, which implies that the original series, the one that we were testing, the alternating series, converges. So if the absolute value diverged, but the original itself converges, then this is conditionally convergent again.
and we'll split this into another video to go over the next example.